Vikings Part 2 Shrines in Forge of Empires. The start of the Viking outpost was the topic of Part 1. It ended with a quest to build two shrines. We constructed shacks to receive population and copper coins. We built an axsmith to produce axes. Normally, that four hour production interval would result in a very boring game. But this Viking outpost grows parallel to our main city. In the meantime, we have enough other tasks there. We use the first axes immediately to trade them for an expansion. In the beginning, we mainly need one thing, more space. I decide for an expansion without obstacles. There is a strong enticement to buy expansions with diamonds on the beta server. InnoGames gives away diamonds along with each test. This time they gave 2000. I easily could buy four expansions with these diamonds. In that case I quickly had great pictures for my videos. But I decided to resist as I want to play exactly in the same way as I am planning to do on the player worlds in the future. There I definitely will not spend 2000 diamonds every three weeks for expansions. I trust in InnoGames that they designed this new feature in a way that players are able to achieve the goal in time without spending diamonds. I reconstruct the little village to have space for more shacks. We don't need that much population, but we urgently need as many copper coins as possible. For the night production at the end of the first day, it was a difficult decision to use the 8 hour production option. But my sleep is more important for me than 30 copper coins. Those who are able to do so should prefer the 4 hour production option as it is cheaper. The axes that I collect the next morning I invested immediately in another expansion. The first expansion I got for 2 axes. The second is already 7 axes. Each purchase increases the price for the next purchase. I again rearrange the buildings of that tiny village. Just like in the main city it would be possible to move the town hall, which is called embassy here. I made a big mistake at this point. Please do not make the same. I built a second X smith. This is nonsense and I easily could have calculated this in advance. Each X production requires copper coins. With only a few shacks we definitely don't have enough copper coins to support two X smith. Two more shacks would have helped much more instead as they would have provided many more copper coins. Let us recall our current quest. Build two shrines. This type of buildings has to be enabled in the embassy. This requires access. It is always important to concentrate on the goal. But I give priority to something else. I will buy another expansion for 15 axes. Since both axsmiths have delivered axes, it becomes obvious why it was such a big mistake to build a second axsmith. We simply don't have enough copper coins to support both of them simultaneously. Now both axsmiths rest for the next 4 hours. I place an expansion and once again reconstruct the village. We need many more shacks to get more copper coins. A little surprise, this outpost receives exactly the same incidence as the main city. That fallen tree is one example and the construction on that street is another example. Our streets are really crowded. A lot of people running through that village. 
InnoGames provided a nice picture showing these Vikings a bit bigger. Whenever we collect the coins, it is already a nice number, but still far away from supporting both X-Smith. I should have demolished the second X-Smith to use that space for more checks. Now I'm a bit wiser. A look on the price of the expansions shows the last purchase did not only increase the price using access, also the price using meat grew. I will have to think twice before buying the next expansion. There's still some space for another shack. Why didn't I place it immediately? While the productions are running, let us review the rewards. We get a little reward for each of the 20 quests. On top, there are milestone rewards in that quest line. 20 forge points, 50 goods of the current age and medals. On the beta server, I am in the contemporary era. There I will receive 8000 medals. At the end of the quest line, we will receive the remaining rewards. First of all, there is Yggdrasil. This unique building can be upgraded up to 8 times by future Viking visits and as a level 9 building, it will then provide on a tiny 3x3 floor size coins, supplies, medals, 10% attack bonus, 10 goods of the current age and 8 forge points. This is absolutely impressive. More Viking visits would then be rewarded with 50 forge points instead of upgrades. If we complete the entire quest line in time, we receive fragments of the runestone on top. Best case, we will receive 9 fragments. If we are a bit slower, we will still receive 3 or 1 or worst case, no fragment. In the beginning, the rune stone is very comparable to the Shrine of Knowledge. Same tiny size and delivering coins and a forge point every day. Upgraded, it then provides two forge points, an attack bonus, medals and one good of the current age. This is exceptional compared to the building size. And you can get that building as often as you want. At this time of the development of that outpost, we need to be patient. We need some more production cycles to have a sufficient number of access to enable that new building in the embassy. I destroy that silly second X-Smith and build two shrines instead. This completes the fifth quest of the quest line. We receive a self-aid kit for it and, as milestone reward, 20 forge points on top. The next goal is constructing a meat brewery. We need many more axes to do so. This brings another break until the third part of this tiny series of FOE Viking videos will follow.